Welcome to the show. Now we begin with other security reports just coming in. Now a new video of the passengers kidnapped from the Abuja to Kaduna train has been obtained by Arise News. In the footage, the passengers are seen appealing to the federal government to meet the kidnappers' demands so they can be freed. Nisi Gabriel has this exclusive report for Arise News from Kaduna. These passengers have been held for eight weeks. They look drained, traumatized by their audio. They are desperate for the government to negotiate their release. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abuzer Muhammad Afzal. I'm working here in a company J Marine in Nigeria. I'm a foreign national, Pakistani national. So we were abducted on 28th March uh, from the Abuja Kaduna train. And uh, we are here. Uh, we are 62 people and uh, the conditions are not very good. So we are appealing to the government of Pakistan and government of Nigeria and to the whole world international community so that they can help us. Thank you very much. Peace be unto you. My name is Mohammed Deyebu. I am among the passengers abducted on the train on the 28th of March 2022. I am calling on the government of Kaduna State, the federal government of Nigeria and the entire human rights group to assist us and ensure that the demands of our abductors are met. The kidnappers say unless their demands are met, nobody will live alive. They accuse the government of not fulfilling its promises. And they say some of the children have now been abducted by the Nigerian army. They are demanding they be released within five days before they will consider releasing any passengers. We are appealing with everybody that is in the position to assist us to please come to our aid and give our abductors their demand so that they can let us go. I am here with my entire family. The families of the kidnapped passengers say it's hard to see their loved ones in such a state. They want the government to take action to secure their freedom. For the first 58, 59 days now, our really relatives are with these uh, kidnappers. Government, government have not done anything. We are suffering. And from the video they release is, is adding emotions, uh, adding a lot of pain to us. I'm calling on all good meaning Nigerians to please Prevail on this government. Let them help our loved ones who are in Bush for the past 59 days, please. Please. The families have been holding protests, trying to get the government's attention. Little has been done so far. And now, the kidnappers are threatening further action if their demands ain't met. Nisi Gabriel, Arise News, Cardinal. And just earlier on in the morning here in Abuja, the nation's capital, some other family members living here staged a protest at a press conference where they actually urged the government to do more. They're asking the federal government to actually help them rescue their family members. Let's listen to them. Appeal to the president of the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, to please, as he mentioned it earlier on his speech, please he should also talk to the security agencies to do more that's the appeal is let the security agency do more on what they have been doing that's our appeal well for more on this i'm now being joined by mike ejofo who is a security consultant and also with me in the studio is arise analyst and human rights lawyer frank titi gentlemen uh welcome to the show it's been a very trying period for nigeria in the past uh week and a half and uh, we've seen all of this starting from an Ambra state which seems to be the theater of all of these beheadings and killings and all of this happening uh, right now uh, let's start with the issue of that woman and the lawmaker the woman and her four kids and then the lawmaker how could such a thing be happening in an Ambra state and what do you think is making the state to lose control of this kind of uh, uh, peace in that sort of environment? I will not uh, completely agree that the state has lost control. But I, what I would rather 
uh, align myself with is that we've lost our values as human beings. Nigerians, most Nigerians have lost their values. Life is no more sacred. And it's painful. I was moved to emotion when I watched uh, the video. And uh, especially the beheading of the lawmaker. You know, in the social media, you have all kinds of things. You don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Like the issue of the woman that was killed. You know, see her uh, with the four kids. Nobody has been able to ascertain the uh, state of origin or where they come from. Yeah, we learned that she's from Madamawa State at the moment. Yeah, that's the latest that, news coming uh, in. Nobody has come out to establish that. But the point I'm making is that whether the person is from Adamawa, is from uh, Imo, is from anywhere, human lives have been lost. That's the most important thing. We have no right to take any life. So the issue of the legislator, now how do you reconcile it? A legislator from Anambra State was beheaded and his head displayed. Another woman killed with the children. Is it, be, is it now, are we talking of ethnic coloration or what? The man is from uh, Anambra. These people are from uh, another part of the country. So we have lost our values. We are not talking of only Anambra, but the thing that is worrisome is that government has not been able to identify the people behind what is happening in, uh, in the Southeast. Let me put it generally that way. Like what happened in the, the, the kidnap, the real uh, kidnap, faces are placed on it. Government is reaching out to the people. But in the Southeast, nobody is responsible, and I believe that government has not been able to pinpoint and identify the people behind this. Well, there was a statement by the presidency this morning, earlier on, which said that the IPOB and ESN, uh, in one way or the other, are linked to this, and uh, the president is saying that well, the security you, you, forces you, have you, to you, do their best. Well, if uh, the statement is coming from the federal government that these people are linked to ESN and the uh, IPOB, IPOB, if you also recall, has continuously denied involvement and even dissociated itself from the sit down at uh, sit at home. Yeah, and, and I was surprised to actually see a statement from them to saying that look, those who are, who are doing these beheadings are not their members, urging them to stop. That is why government has to go into this matter to identify people behind these senseless killings. Okay, I'll just ask you to hold on there while we bring you in. Uh, the, the, the right to life is one, right to life is one of the cardinal thing in every country, every country. Uh, and I'm surprised that a lot of Nigerians are beginning to lose this right carelessly. Just like we read earlier on, about 65 between Sunday and yesterday, just killed and gone like that. And people are losing this precious thing, the, the ability for it to be able to be in existence just like that without protection from the state. What's happening? Well, thank you very much. But you, you know, we are it's supposed to be in a very somber mood, well, especially after we just watched that uh, video uh, that was uh, exclusively given to Arise News and uh, with all of that uh, cry. A country is actually on its knees, yet we are in a political, uh, I mean, electionary uh, season. And um, it's as if we are adopting uh, talking as a coping mechanism for dealing with what ought to be so much of a, a traumatizing situation for the entire world, not necessarily Nigeria. Uh, we know that the world is focusing on other conflict zones like Ukraine, but it should really trouble the world, the spate of which uh, violence is consistently being carried out in Nigeria, in Africa's largest uh, uh, democracy. Um, the, the world should really be concerned. So it, clearly, the government is at its wit's end. Um, it's done much of the propaganda, much of the justification, much of the usual uh, condemnation of acts of violence. And we only see increase in these um, 
uh, you know, violence, especially with the violation to the most important right, the singular right to life, for, upon which every other human right, uh, you know, rests. Uh, so it, it's a problem, but we are just reaping the consequences of our action over the years. We have been a country that has venerated impunity. We haven't, uh, you know, valued quality life. We, we just think, we just make life, uh, live life as well, getting by. Yeah, and uh, uh, sorry to just cut in there, TT. You see these gory videos being shared around social media. I mean, in those days, I remember, once you see anything that's related to blood or anything within, I mean, you see lots of people, you know, so I'm posting it. Don't watch, don't watch. But now, I don't know, it looks like a lot of Nigerians have lost their humanity. They share yeah, this thing, they watch it. Yeah, I mean, the president in his statement yeah. earlier today had to say it. Please, citizens, stop sharing these gory videos. It, 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 it adds to, I mean, the pains yeah. of humanity when you not, share it not, and more not, people not are watching ne it. Not necessarily. The principle of catharsis is that bring up the fear, bring up the horror, bring it up and deal with it so that you don't have to live in constant fear. So when you see citizens now going ahead to look at the horrific videos directly sharing it, it's like trying to push go, go themselves on to say that, look, after all, what is in it any, anyway? Why should I continually live in fear? So let's look at let's deal with it. So I did mention the principle of if, uh, uh, see if it's a coping mechanism. So it, it, it's a new, it's a social change. We weren't like that before. But you couldn't, you know, just, you know, live in the quiet fear of what will happen next. I mean, I don't want to say it all. So citizens are now driven to actually deal with their fears directly. And that's why they are looking at all these videos and sharing mm -hmm. them, you know, as a way of keeping them, preparing themselves to be strong enough to face what is seemingly prevalent, which is this violent atmosphere. It is a, okay. it's, it's, it's a social problem we can deal with separately, which we may not be able to talk about here. However, what must what we what we should we should be realistic to 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 say without this is not about government bashing. It's about being realistic that it appears our government is overwhelmed. And I said it is a consequence of our actions and inactions of the past, immediate past. We fail to localize security. We fail to give Nigerians a sense of oneness, a sense of a, you know, a, a national goal or a national dream. We don't have it. So what does it mean to be a Nigerian? It's very difficult to, uh, to find someone in the street of Lagos or Abuja define or categorize or describe himself as a Nigerian. He doesn't know what it means. Okay, and I'll bring you in, Michael Jofo. What do we do? Because a lot of citizens may be tempted to resort to self-help. What do we do to help our security forces to ensure that we don't go beyond where we are? Well, resorting to self-help will eventually lead to anarchy. So, and we cannot fold our hands helplessly that government must provide security. It's not possible for government. In fact, when I do the, the, the lectures on people on security consciousness, I also emphasize the need that people must be involved. You know, the social media has its good and bad side. Only two days ago, I think there was uh, something in, in circulation. And the first question I asked that the, the, the measures came from Anambra state government, which eventually Anambra state government denied. But my first reaction when I saw that, this is laudable if it's coming from government. But my fear is that this thing did not poorly written document like that, couldn't have emanated from a, that was my first reaction. And uh, you look at, uh, look at the message and not the messenger. What is contained in that paper is the way we should go. Get our uh, traditional rulers, communities, get them involved. These people operating live in communities, but because of fear of their own safety, nobody is ready to talk. And if government is ready to protect the citizens, I'm sure the citizens will also volunteer information. So we also have to get involved. If you say it doesn't concern me today, eventually it will concern you. Is that the person you know, a relation or friend, will be killed or kidnapped and you'll be affected. So this is a monster that we must all confront as Nigerians.
-hmm. And uh, I think it's only Zeke who said that it's only a madman that confronts somebody with God. These people, do it, perpetrators of this, are heartless. If you, I, for instance, cannot take a gun and shoot at somebody that I know has not done anything. But going to the extent of using knife to cut off somebody, say, I think that's that is beyond human. Yeah, and humanity. I don't see any religion that promotes no that. Religion. No, 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 I think that's Have we, we, we lost should, our humanity no, 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 we as individuals in, religion in this country? Here. Because this is outright use of terror in a systematic manner that achieves an end result. Let's look at it that way. Whether it's in the Southeast as we presently expect, uh, experience it today, or in the not, uh, I mean, in the Northwest or no, 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 the Northeast, the idea is use terror to the, yeah the, the same old way terror has been used in the past where it's just that this time around the terror i remember my uh, my uh, international law classes under professor sage he used to say the terrorism he knew which he taught us was that oh if you don't do this we will do this but the ter terrorism of these days that we are doing this so that you will do this if you don't do this we'll continue to do this and, and how I, I want you to educate the public and we journalists on how we can handle this without promoting them. I mean, you could have seen the videos that we got as exclusive uh, from all of this. The central factor here is to drive fear through the media. Yeah. We try to reduce it, but we also owe it an obligation to let society know that this is what these guys are saying at the same time. How do we balance that without ethnic coloration? No, but let us first of all comment a channel like the Arise News in the way it has handled these security matters so far without you know traumatize for traumatizing the, uh, the the populace with these gory pictures yet it is a consumer responsibility to inform the world not necessarily Nigerians that this is going on to drive a solution oriented approach to these matters so if you ask and I, I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, push a, an agenda which is let it be a world problem a humanity problem that is what's going on in Nigeria because we have a government that is facing an intractable problem think about it as a Nigerian so a large extent you will feel for the government to think that there are myriads of security complicated security situations across the country whether it's in North Central North East North West or now South East and then it used to be a, a pockets in the in, in this in the South South so in that kind of uh, situation, when you know that apparently, obviously, those who run the government don't have what it takes to provide the solution. So let's begin to work together as a world community. Let's now look at it. Those who want to cover the state of their own, uh, infiltrating the northern part of this country with, in such uh, a manner, will ultimately, be, they should be made to understand that they cannot live in isolation and they cannot get their end because the world is united against them. That's one. And again, what happens? Mr. Joffa should know well. I'm sure he knows very well the issue of uh, proliferation of small arms and light weapons across the West African subregion and how it ought to have been, how, how it was aided much by the complacency and the refusal of the world powers to actually take positive steps in ensuring that there, there, there was illicit flow of arms into the West African subregion. In fact, it was aided by some of these western powers some of these uh, global powers and now we're suffering the consequences so i think that nigeria and the entire world should see this not as a nigeria problem but as a west african problem that will ultimately engulf the entire world okay uh Jafar, we've seen some people saying that we should start looking at political solutions release Mazen Namdekano, maybe that will assuage the feelings of those in the southeast. And then in the north, we should look at amnesty. Uh, we've tried some of these measures before in one way or the other. Some of them we succeeded, some we didn't. We have this DDR by the military that's ongoing. Have we got to the point where we just have to use politics to resolve this issue? I have uh, looked at the issue of IPOP right from the word go as a political problem that requires a political solution. If you recall, I think it was in this station or uh, in 2017 that uh, I advised against uh, the prescription of IPOP that if government did that, the guys would go underground. Now it had been hijacked by criminals because IPOP comes out openly to say we are not involved in this. And 
You see, there's a, a difference. We must make a distinction between what is happening in the southeast and uh, what is happening in the northwest. In the northwest, people are kidnapped and demands are made. But in the southeast, demands are not, people are just killed and this project has been hijacked. The elders are speaking. Uh, the governor of uh, Anambra State, for instance, visited in Nandekano and at uh, uh, has taken some steps. So I also believe that the federal government should also look, this is the right time to do that as we are going into politics. I think my own thinking, government will even score more political points if they go into negotiations with IPOP so that IPOP on its part since they claim they are not part of this, what is going on, should even help in fishing out these criminal elements oh, that are okay. really looking at uh, And uh, I'll come to you, Tieti. You looked at that video and you saw the rights of these Nigerians who have been abducted, being violated by these terrorists. And they've spent more than a month there and living in that kind of condition. A woman who was pregnant, giving birth. These guys even bring in medical doctors to help. You know, these people give birth. I mean, tell us about the rights of these Nigerians being deprived and what the government can do since the terrorists are saying that they have their own people in, in, in government detention and there should be an exchange. Oh, yes. Um, we have come to realize that uh, it is not true that government does not negotiate with terrorists. And so let's uh, government not continue to give the impression that it's trying to act strong and it's by not negotiating. The government is failing in the way it's managing the situation. Uh, you talk about rights. I mean, the, the, these are persons that have submitted their lives to the protection of a sovereign, and the sovereignty of a country called Nigeria. And Nigeria is supposed to have, uh, uh, you know, sovereignty connotes the fact that it is the most powerful power within mm -hmm. a geographical defini de definition. Uh, and so, when those who run government are now failing to exercise the power of the state to protect the most important property of the state, that is the one citizen, then you should know that it doesn't have a reason to exist. So the, the problem here again is that where does the focus lie? Our country ought to have been united against terrorism. Our country ought to have been united for the, uh, uh, for the purpose of protecting life. We are not united. Within to, to, in that regard, the forces that are pulling us apart appear to be winning. So, either, so terrorism is having its way, uh, banditry, kidnapping, and uh, you know, trying to form parallel governments, all of these problems are succeeding because of the lack of a central force that puts us together, that, focus, that, that uh, will focus us in solving these problems. We talk about having national ethos, national, uh, you know, motto, uh, national drive. Who can we say is uniting us in this country against a particular vice or evil like terrorism? Who? Our president ought to. But, you see, I don't want to bring, I don't agree that we, the, the, this, this complicated situation that we're in requires us a political solution. If it does, the, then the president would have adopted the Yaradua's model of mm. the call the, the Tompolos and the, the Boy Loaf and the Asari Dukuba and the Grand Amnesty. And so, who do you know that is oppressing in the in North uh, West, for example? In fact, in in South East, it's becoming more complex. It is a situation where Ima powerful the, the issues a statement and then you have a counter statement. Now, what led to Mazinam the Kano in the first place? We had a, you know, an era, a constant reinforced era of misgovernance, of denigration of people's rights. How were persons so disgruntled against the Nigerian state? Was it not because the Nigerian state kept on failing in meeting their yearnings and aspirations and not only that trampling on their rights? Let me tell you, IPOB won its sympathies because of the actions of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Joffo will know better. The actions of the SARS police, for example, SARS Okuzu, for example, in, the, in, in Anambra State, was a horrific representation of what the people perceive as government oppression from the center, from the federal government. So the people over the years kept on, you know, hating Nigeria. Preparing, being a, 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 preparing the ground for a Mazinam Dekano to come and liberate them. Now, the thing is out of hand. Mazinam Dekano, according to his lawyer the other day, a very good friend of mine, said that, look, he, his lawyer said, Mazinam Dekano will be horrified 
with the level of violence against his own people that he has been fighting for. Who is supposed to come and save? Of his people. <laughs> Very sad situation. Uh, as we try to round off this conversation, uh, Quickly before we go, we're in the political season, and then we just see politicians going about doing their politics, don't even uh, becoming, they, they, they are not, care. they don't care whether people are dying, you know, they just do their things as long as they get their party tickets and all of that. Let's talk about how much trouble the politicians have ahead of them to solve when they eventually the, the, get their the, party the, tickets the chicken, and win. The chicken <laughs> is coming home to roost. It's not just securing a ticket. You go and campaign. They will still wait for you. So that's why I say this is the right time. Uh, like uh, Mr. Titi said, he, he eventually came back to me. These are political issues. You talk of marginalization, it's political. You talk of views of rights, it's still political. That can be addressed. Now, I, w I want to see how they will campaign. If, whether you are APC or PDP, you go and campaign in the Southeast. If you don't solve this problem, more deaths will come up. And so that's, the, that's the, the fear, so that we don't have, so for example, Northerners going, in, going to campaign in, this, in the South, and then you what, see what, maybe what, what ethnic coloration coming into it that a Northerner can't campaign in the East, what I am an Easterner can't Even campaign in the, the North or South. Even the cannot campaign you know, in the so South East. How so do we prevent this? That government, before campaign start, should summon an emergency. How do we resolve this problem? We have to resolve it. Uh, okay. If we don't resolve it, very quickly be before we go to the World, World Igbo Congress, for example, is kind of uh, a preferred solutions to the situation in the southeast. The, so, the, the solutions have to be on, homegrown with, with the understanding from government that it has to cede uh, some of its control to some persons who have greater interest in these regions. You know, it, it, let me tell you, the average northerner, the average southeasterner wants to be a part of Nigeria, just like the average Niger Delta. So the problem is those who want to fight and create a greater Nigeria are fewer, are less powerful, and those who want to create confusion who actually benefit from the confusion and the disintegration are more with okay. louder voices. And, and you just raised something very critical. I just hope that the government will listen. During the war, we could see how there was a sort of national propaganda enlightening people. Let's come together. Let's unite. And we say we are in war. But we are not seeing all of this. The Ministry of Information, the National Orientation Agency, well, I think those in government know better. And the National Assembly, let's just hope that they'll keep budgeting for them so much. We must thank you so much. Uh, Mike J4 is a security consultant. Thank you so much for thank enlightening you. our viewers on the best ways to resolve these issues. And of course, Frank Tietje is a human rights lawyer and a rights news analyst. Thank you so much for your insight.